world likes stability. You know, aerospace and defense industry in particular, which I'm very familiar with, likes stability. We like to plan ahead. We like to build a posture for potential conflicts. And the business community doesn't like surprises either. President-elect Trump has made some very clear statements that his goal uh, around international trade and the trade policies has been to bring jobs back to the United States. While that's a worthy goal, uh, I, I don't necessarily think that changes in trade practices will guarantee that to happen. And I think Trump's challenge is going to be solving that long-term problem without having those short-term negative consequences. For the last 10 or 15 years, we've seen a lot of uh, resources move to countries like China. The principal reason for that is they had a cheap labor advantage. Two things are happening. Number one, that cheap labor advantage that China has is going away. They've been giving their manufacturing workers fairly large increases, year-over-year uh, -year increases of between 5 and 10% for the last few years. They're, in essence, pricing themselves out of the cheap labor market. Secondly, advanced manufacturing and the energy independence that the United States has today uh, positions us to take the lead in manufacturing away from China anyway. Recently, uh, President-elect Trump had a conversation with the uh, leader in Taiwan. And that's a reversal of the one China policy that the United States has had, the UN has had for many decades. I don't think that that was done accidentally. I think that he took that call intentionally to send a message to China. And that message was that China is not going to dictate U.S. policy. While I think that's uh, a reasonable approach, it also has its risks. If he continues to use that kind of non-diplomatic diplomacy, uh, that can be a problem. Secondarily, uh, the President of the United States is in a powerful position to influence world opinion. Now, if you kind of keep a low profile and, a, and an even tone, when you do say something a little bit outlandish, people notice. So there's a little bit of the boy who cried wolf here. If you're always kind of saying things that are outlandish, when you then want to make a policy statement or invoke a change, it's gonna be very difficult for them to separate, wow, President Trump is really trying to say something or President Trump is being President Trump. Now that he's going to be President Trump, he's gonna to have to deliver on these issues. I think it can go one of two distinct ways. I think we can end up with a marvelous outcome where we take advantage of a person who has done well in business, who understands business, who doesn't have the political experience, but also doesn't have the political downside. We also have the potential of having someone who has business experience, but no political experience, and then unfortunately stumbling on the political side and having the associated business and global outcomes that would be very negative.